Well, hello everybody. In today's video, we're going to be talking about inner system cargo links. I'm going to show you two methods of doing this. The first way is the best way to do it. However, it has a lot of interface issues and it's very confusing unless you know the things I'm going to tell you in this video. The second way is the way that it should work, but it, it has a lot of bottleneck issues and I will go into why it's not the best method. Yeah, there are a lot of issues. Now, I want to preface this by saying that the inter system cargo link system in this game can so janky. That's the technical term. But I hope that by the end of this video, you will understand how these things work and know how to fix any problems that come along. So let's start. So the objective of this video is to link two outposts in different systems that are fabricating parts for comlinks. We are on Andromus 6B outposts making tau grade rheostats from beryllium and copper. This is an excellent moon a terrible time dilution but that doesn't really matter for this because cargo links send in real game time they don't send in ut time inter system cargo links only makes sense if you want this to really be a passive thing in the background so you go off on an adventure for two hours and you come back and you'll have a ton of resources otherwise you're kind of just better off going system to system now andromedus also has helium 3 and in this scenario it will be our main base this will be where we get our helium from this example we're only having to supply helium-3 on one side. That's right, we don't have to have both sides powered by helium-3. And we're connecting it to an outpost of nickel and cobalt on Bessel-3. This is a very popular area for a lot of people, so I thought I would use it. So on Bessel-3b, we are fabricating isocentered magnets and sending them to make comlinks, which give us 2 XP per sell for a little bit more. This is not necessarily the best setup, so don't go off of these planets. You know, use use the knowledge of how inter-system cargo links work to your advantage. This is just something I made to facilitate why you would want to even use these things. So we want to send these isocentered magnets across the system to Adramas. So what we're going to do is build a cargo link inter-system. Now you will notice on the front, it has both an in and out box and on the back it has a fuel supply we're not going to worry about the fuel on this side that is being produced at what i'm calling the main base which is basically just fueling all of these on one side all we have to do is plug in the resource we want to send out you can send multiple resources i could have received things here i'm going to tell you not to do that the thing with bottlenecks is if things fill up then the cargo ship gets full of that good and then you have resources that you were sending coming back because if the ship gets full it can't take the other parts it causes all these issues that is it that's all we have to do here. We're sending this to the main base. We don't have to power it. We don't have anything coming in. We have everything running into the fabricators and from the fabricators running into storage and then from storage running to the outgoing box. Okay, cool. So we're done here. I'm a little overburdened, so I'm gonna run to my ship. Friendly tip that when you're on your ship, you can hit R to go straight to the cockpit. And now we're going to go to Andromas. And we're going to go to main base with the helium and the other resources that I need. Now, I will be putting out a guide let's play on this manufacturing build for those who are interested. However, I'm not going into this because it would just take too long. But I wanted to explain how inter-system cargo links work, and I thought this was a great example. Now, here, you're going to build your helium extractors. I've already done this. Now, what's great about this location, Andromus 6B, is that helium is just in the air. Uh, I can place the extractors anywhere. It, there's um, acidic rains and types of things here. So I have a very high amount of helium. I don't have to find perfect locations. Really, really easy. And then from there, you'll feed it into your gas storage. So now we have a supply of helium. We're going to place our cargo link inter system. Okay, right there. So now we want to connect the incoming box, the green box, to the storage we made to receive the goods. All right. And I use a ground box that feeds into all these. It just helps me visually know where my connectors are going because it gets kind of crazy when they're in a stack. This is just a personal preference of mine. And then I link these going all the way up. All right. So now that we've done that, we just need to link the last box in our chain of gas to the power. And that's it. This is the only one that needs to be powered. Then we're going to establish the connection between the two outposts. And this is where the fun begins. And this is the most important part of the video. And you need to watch all of this to truly understand. So we've confirmed connection. 
here's the problem. The UI freaks out on these cargo links when you do it this way, but it really is the best way because it avoids all the bottlenecks of sending multiple materials. Here comes, here comes the guy. All right, so the ship just landed. I have nothing to send to the other outpost, so we're not gonna see anything. However, when it lands, it will pick up the parts I want, come back and start the process. Three minutes later, he's coming back. It seems to be kind of three minutes on the clock. So this is what you expect, cargo link. You expect to see the incoming box fill up. This is one of the UI glitches. You won't see shit. This is why it's confusing and why you think it's not working. However, it is working. And that's why it's important that you have your cargo set up so that it's feeding. You can see the bright light. It's feeding and filling that cargo. That's how you know it's working. And that's why you think it's not working because you don't actually see it come in. So we can see here, we got it. Cool, right? Now, the great thing about sending the parts rather than the material is it's limited by weight. So you can send a lot more of the finished product than you can send of the raw materials. This only works if you're producing everything in one outpost and you don't have resources coming in that it becomes this efficient. But now you can see that I have the isocentric. It brought in 700 and I have 977 tau grade rheostats here. So I have enough to build quite a bit. And each of these gives two experience per 99 batch I'm making 198 experience. So this is a really easy setup anybody can do and you're going to get twice the experience that you get with frame. Realistically speaking, it's not necessary, but it is kind of cool. It works. It just works. <laughs> now here's the problem. <laughs> Many problems. Sometimes it's not going to work and you're not going to know. So the way you're going to gauge is if you come back and you see that the boxes are not filling or they're not full, that tells you something is wrong. What you're gonna need to do is completely delete the cargo link on both sides, reset it up and reestablish this. This is why people don't wanna make guides on inter-system cargo links. They are trash, they are garbage. They do work, but you're gonna have to constantly maintain them and check them and they're always breaking and they're always bugging out. A couple rules to uh, keep your sanity. I don't know how true this is, but I have noticed if I drop anything on the pad, like if I drop an item on the pad, it actually bugs out. Like, I don't know if I'm crazy. Multiple people have told me the same thing. I've noticed it in my place. We could be totally crazy. They're trying to make something illogical logical. Is it in itself insanity? I'm probably nuts. Right now, it, everything is working great. I've told you about the UI bug that you won't see anything incoming. All right, it's landing once again. We're going to check the incoming box. Again, we see nothing, but we look up in the sky. We desperately want to look up in the sky. All right, yeah, you can see the second box is now going up. So it's working with just one side powered. Isn't that great? So that's the best way to do it. When it bugs out, delete it. That is intersystem cargo links. Now, if you want to go a step further and go into the realm of crazy, continue to watch this video. If both sides of the cargo link need to have H3, if they patch this in the future, I think there's actually an easy way to do this. So what you would need to do in this situation is not only fuel the inter-system, but send H3 by going to the outgoing box. So we're going to send H3 and receive product. There's game time, which is UT, and then there's real time, which is what cargo links are based on. They're based on real time gameplay. So if I'm playing the game, the bottleneck will occur. However, if I sleep, it will burn through all of the helium three and kind of correct itself. However, until I do that, nothing is moving because the bottleneck exists. This is the chaos of inter system cargo links into the void of insanity. You can realize why you really just want one thing going through these inter system cargo links. But however, if you're crazy and you want to you want to go the distance, this is how you would do it. So now what I'm going to do is go to the other base and I'm going to set up that helium three to be powered into the inter system system cargo link. So we're going to pestle. This actually might become the way to do these things depending on patches. That's why no one wants to touch this stuff because it's so broken that it's obviously going to be patched. So now we're at the other base where we're going to be receiving helium three. So obviously you would want quite a bit of storage for gas, but not so much. So this is where the gas gets wasted though. It's just such a waste of gas. So here is the incoming box which we will plug into so let me break this you can't connect the incoming where the h3 is coming in straight into the gas won't let you do it 
So you have to use a gas container as the middleman and then link that into the fuel. So it arrives, it drops off the helium-3, it puts it into the gas, and then it puts it into there. The problem here is that if there's any helium-3 remaining in this vessel, it will diminish the amount of materials that we can bring back to the base. This is why I'm talking about bottlenecks with multiple materials. If you don't have storages to offset these things, it causes massive inefficiencies, which is why you really want to use one material. I would highly suggest that you do not use this methodology. This was actually the methodology I was going to recommend you use until uh, Red Snow 846 pointed out to me you could use these as a one-way system. Now, it will reduce the amount of UI bugs, but it won't reduce the amount of bugs in general. Again, if you've done everything correctly and it's not working, delete it and re-establish connections. That is the rule for everything in this game. If you've done everything correctly and it doesn't work, delete it. Anyway, that is how inter-system cargo links work. I will have a Let's Play showcasing the manufacturing setup I have here. I'm not including that in this video, so thank you so much for watching. <laughs>